Hi everyone, this is Polkit. Today I will be explaining how how I made this military grade portable, uh, portable TV television and uh, I will be giving you the breakdown of the process I followed in order to get this result um, from starting to the end. I won't be going into um, specific details i will just touching the surf i will be just touching the surface but uh, you will get a really good idea on how the process works and what should what you should be doing with your next project so let's get started um, so the first thing is to research and for the research i have the references that i went online and uh, downloaded it so if I show it to you uh, these are the references that I uh, followed uh, that I downloaded from internet there are some of the really good models too done by um, really talented 3d modelers um, so all of those I kind of have it in one place and then I um, go into Photoshop or Illustrator and just combine them. There are other softwares that you can use in order to make a um, image pane for the with different uh, references that you want to follow and uh, use in your models. So these are some of the things that I used and um, these are the models I came up through uh, um, research and uh, this is it so I will and I will also show you some of the models that I took at uh, took as a references so these are the really talented guys that I found on uh, art station and uh, I kind of took ideas from multiple models it's not a bad thing to uh, look at others models you're not uh, really cheating or taking their ideas they are also following the uh, real-time models done by reputed companies and you are just taking the idea seeing it in 3d uh, 360 degree angle what can be taken in your in your design and you can use it in your design and how to do it so these are really talented people and i would highly recommend you to go through their uh, art station account and try to find what they have been doing um, here is another model portable tv nec 5000 um, really beautiful model if you look at it um, and they are so detailed that uh, you can get a really good idea of what you want to do really want to do uh, there's another artist and I took a sorry about that I took a idea from her model for, of Hitachi TV in, of 1980 and it's a really good way to learn about the uh, different aspects of the model the feature of the model to look at it like I have used some of the ideas from these models how things are because you will never be able to get a real uh, 360 degree image of a model like these like I I was lucky to get uh, my hand on one of these models uh, which was done by this guy James Heron I I hope I pronounce his now name correctly and uh, I was able to get nearly all the images so that was helpful uh, so you will have to research um, really deeply in order to get all the features of the model you want to uh, develop for your portfolio for your just for fun um, and I I had to do a research and going into 
uh, details and uh, what can be taken. So I took ideas from all of these and also from uh, these that I got over the internet. Like I love these uh, models and uh, real images of the different products of the different uh, radios as well as the televisions or the mix of these. You will see I have used something like this in my model and also something like these, like small, small details pops out when you model it and that is how it uh, feels interesting when you render, render your project. So let me just quickly go through my model, how I did it. So in order to start, I use my reference image in order to get the idea of the basic shapes. So I start with block out. So with block out, I just make use basic shapes to in order to get the idea of what should be done with the model. Uh, so these are just basic shapes, squares, rectangles, uh, circles, uh, and cylinders. So I had everything lined up and going through my reference. So if you see, I love the idea of uh, this guy, like I told you, the buttons. Uh, this is a really good uh, feature that I loved it. Um, for the speaker, I went through this guy over here. I love the details, how they made it, uh, the kind of a bevel thing and all. I love the way things work out here, the extra details, panels, like a panel something that they added and the details on this on this uh, dial and everything. Uh, I was also going through, like I told you, these guys, models that they have done. So it gives me a better idea of how things can be used. So I love the details on these dials, details on these, um, the back side, like I love this area, how she did it. Uh, and uh, I didn't went with this feature, the handle. I went with the one over here and I love the feature of this panel, an extra bulky panel, which gives it a more uh, robust feeling, uh, like a military grade or something um, material. So I use this. I love the way uh, the TV screen and the whatever the hood, or whatever it's called. Uh, I I love the design how it came out, and I also love the feature of this giving a nice uh, a texture kind of a thing. Uh, like if you look at uh, here, I love the way they have done it and they have put the dial over um, the display screen on the cutting the texture and I loved it and that is what I have been using in my own um, project where I use the design and I use style to cover it and show half of the design so you have to go through the references and find what you love uh, moving on, so I used these basic shapes in order to get a, a basic idea of what I want to do and about these um, different markings or what you say, the edges, I use it as my reference because I like to keep things in uh, like geometrical um, and uh, so I always try to measure things according to halves and one by three, one by four, or however it works. So this is the middle point of this line and the, this is the middle point. This, these are divided into 
three halves and this gives you a really good idea like if you want to do a symmetrical thing you can easily do it at the same time the, uh, you have to break the symmetry somewhere so I break it over here where I use different shapes and move them in different position um, in later stages you will see that I have even changed some of the features that I have in during blockout because blockout is mostly, mostly for uh, giving you a better idea of what you want to do but you are you will always be making changes in the later stages so it is just uh, for a reference for a, uh, for you to get started with something um, so once you have the block out I usually go to the initial uh, low initial low is kind of a high poly that you will be using uh, it is in order to explain it so let me explain it in a, a better way um, I use block out to make low high initial low then I use this initial low to exp um, in order to make high poly so I export these things all of these things into ZBrush and I kind of give it a more uh, subtle look to it I kind of change things, bevel it, uh, give more details to it, boolean like if you try to boolean this part, the speaker part all together in Maya you will have lots of uh, problem because of high number of uh, faces and complex geometry but the same thing can be done in ZBrush and it make the process much more easier um, so I try to have it in low poly I call it uh, initial low but uh, you can call it high poly or whatever I call it initial low because I use the same uh, things in order to have my low poly later, later on so you use block out then you move to initial low and from initial low you go to both stages of high poly and low poly um, so this is how I work on my things so for the initial low what I do is um, like in block out phase I didn't have any um, like really uh, extra details to it I just had some uh, placeholders which I will be using to bevel uh, not bevel I mean the boolean uh, which you will be using to boolean different shapes and different pieces and then I use uh, initial low to give more details in Maya or any other software that you might be using and it will it will help you to transi transition into ZBrush and refine it and make it um, high poly efficient high poly so if I show you this button I had a cylinder here and uh, I give a texture that I created uh, and give it a really nice um, feel to the button by um, wrapping the texture onto my button and if I show you the uh, so if you let me just select it if I just bring it outside in order to show you I can show you the steps that I have done so these are the different parts that I've used so how it will work is in ZBrush I will be combining these two parts all together then I will be using boolean to subtract this part from the button itself and then I will be using this uh, circle part in order to have it a better look uh, something like this where I have uh, deleted that uh, uh, cylinder kind of a thing and then add it a circle kind of a thing inside it to give it a better look 
so all these high poly stuff I usually do in ZBrush. Uh, I will tell you why I do it um, in the later stages. So once you have all those things, you line up other things like these. I already had uh, the screws that I created for a different project, so I used the same material again. Um, there's no harm to use the materials that you have uh, you already have from other projects. Just make sure you don't overdo everything because then it kills the purpose of what you, uh, kills the purpose of experimentation and learning uh, because you will be repeating the same things and it gets really um, boring to look at because it doesn't have any new features to it. So I use these things. Uh, let me just remove wireframe and shade it so that you can you are able to check the product more uh, the model more carefully so same goes with this I love the idea uh, of uh, one of the project here this is a Sony Jekyll a 300 model and someone uh, and there's a kind of a feature for the an antenna and I use the same thing for my for my model um, and it's it looks really good when you zoom in and look at it all the bevels and the smoothness and this part where they have kind of a chipped a small part of it and show it's just interesting to look so you have to do things which looks really interesting in order to uh, help your model pop up when uh, it looks beautiful to the eye um, so moving ahead I have other things here uh, so with this I will be what I have done is I use this part this is the body I will be combining this smaller part to the body and also this uh, this will be used as a metal I guess uh, Yeah, I use it as a metal here, so and this is also a metal piece that I will be using and I will be uh, using boolean to delete this part from this metal piece and this is a place where you can lift this part so I kept it separate so all these boolean stuff um, I will be doing in ZBrush uh, like the basic things you can do in Maya like uh, in the later stages I boolean this part from uh, sorry this part from this part uh, in Maya because it was quite easy thing to do same with this but it depends on per personal preference if you want to use ZBrush uh, sometimes the basic Boolean stuff you can do in Maya because it's quite fast uh, as compared to ZBrush uh, but it's up to you uh, so for this part I had a shape like this which I will be uh, doing Boolean so, and uh, the thing is you at this stage you also need to know which part you will be repeating um, so this thing is same both ways this also goes same so you don't have to redo these things for different places you can just uh, yeah, export this part this particular site in ZBrush and then you can uh, give details to this part and uh, then, du then bring it in Maya and duplicate it to have it over here because it's nearly the same same goes with this handle part I change it later on uh, but this is a basic idea 
same goes with these guys uh, and also these guys uh, I got an idea from one of the models uh, yeah so I love this part where they have uh, written something and uh, they have an arrow giving you a giving the person an idea where to push it out to open it and I love this idea and I wanted to have the same thing in my project so I use uh, that feature in my project too and also I love this uh, small thing where the panel goes all the way to the side and opens up so I use the same idea in my project uh, I used the panel, moved it to the side and uh, that is how I came up with, with these different ideas. Um, I also had, maybe not here, um, so all these things I take it in ZBrush, let me show you uh, my ZBrush file. Sorry about that, just give me a moment. So here is my uh, the detail part. So what I did is I brought the I brought that uh, initial low over here and I gave it to uh, the beveling and uh, the boolean thing. I didn't boolean this but I should have done it. It was an extra work so I kind of got lazy in this area but uh, so I, bevel, uh, I boolean all of these things and I will tell you why I did it in a moment. Uh, but these are the kind of things I did in ZBrush in order to give details. Apart from that, I also uh, give wear and tear uh, every some places like these uh, in order to because when we will be baking it, all these details will be popping out uh, on our uh, on our low poly, and it makes the model really good to look at uh, so I gave some details we here and there I kind of uh, I mostly use uh, auto group with UVs which I make in uh, Maya I won't be going into details like I told you it's a long process uh, and I polish them uh, mask by mask by feature and then I polish them in order to give them a uh, nicer bevel uh, because if you give the same bevel in uh, Zebra in Maya to make the high poly it won't be uh, as detailed as in ZBrush so that is why I use ZBrush uh, at, and at the same time if you look at it I don't use ZBrush for everything like I didn't use ZBrush for the uh, antenna part if I show you here uh, I didn't use this in ZBrush what I did was I made it in let me show you I, here probably So whatever you can make high poly in Maya, you should do it. So it didn't have any um, major details that I had to look onto. So I did it. I kind of uh, beveled the edges and then uh, smoothed it out uh, through this area, uh, this feature. So 
it gave me a kind of a good result as as far as high poly is concerned so i didn't use high uh, didn't use a zbrush to make high poly for everything i use it only for the complex shapes that i want uh, like you cannot make something like this in maya you can make it but it won't be as smooth and as good looking as uh, as it is it can be done in zbrush so that is why i use some of the things uh, in zbrush and some of the things in maya uh, this is a normal smooth thing that i have done in uh, maya itself same goes with this part same goes with this so there you have to decide what you can uh, like can bevel and make into high poly in maya and where, what you need to make high poly in uh, zbrush even this thing i didn't in maya quite uh, quite all right because you won't be seeing um, everything when you will be uh, doing it um, like rendering it but uh, there are some of the features that you will obviously be noticing so it all depends on the modeler what he or she wants to do and how they want to do it so all those things once I have it in ZBrush I kind of uh, go to select I select one of one by one and then I decimate them into something lesser number of uh, polygons um, and then I bring it into Maya and once I have it in Maya I spread those spread these uh, parts uh, with respect to my low poly so the body uh, the high poly goes with the low poly uh, body in order to have them the basic idea is to keep both the high poly and the low poly together so that when you bring it uh, into substance painter in the next step you can bake them uh, perfectly uh, so that is what I have done here so let me just remove the wireframe so if you look at it the body uh, of the high poly and the low poly are all together um, and it will this will be the stage where you will be deciding what you want to have as a uh, different uh, different object and what you want to kind of bake together so when I say bake together if I hide the low poly this is the high poly everything is high poly which with whatever is colored is high poly and what I did is when I will be using my low poly all the features of the high poly like this part this yellow part will be uh, flashed into or baked into my low poly so it will look like it's a different uh, object but it's not it's just one object so that is why baking is really important because it reduces the number of polygons in your um, in your object in your model in order to make it lightweight for you to use in different games and uh, movies or wherever you are using it and advertisements or wherever and uh, it's an efficient way to work on work with so that is why i use baking as a means to give it a more uh, subtle look more uh, detailed look yet uh, yet having less number of polygons in your in your projects so 
I kind of use that if I show you my low poly, just the low poly. So like there are some things that you won't be seeing like this part. So for the body I deleted for the body I deleted this part because you won't be seeing it anyway. So why to waste your uh, UV uh, UVs in uh, making something like this, right? So I deleted these parts. I also deleted some of the parts that uh, can be duplicated, like in this uh, uh, in this object. These are the side panels uh, to hold uh, not the panel, the rubber thing that holds the um, the handle. So what I did is I just model this one part and I while doing the UVs I cut it uh, in a way that you I can use this UV shell in different parts of my uh, in my in the object. So once you have the so all these steps you have to uh, decide when to do uh, which is usually done when doing low poly thing uh, so once you have all the low polys if I show you my, my UV shell also I made two objects for my uh, for the screen one uh, because I had to redo my screen my screen so because I found a way to do it but uh, in order to uh, texture my screen I had to have one by one uh, kind of a square thing uh, so I made a different uh, material for the screen and every other material for the object is same so all these things contain one object while the screen contains one material and the screen contains the other material so total of two materials I am been using so if I show you the UV of my object goes like this so if you look at it you have to delete the things that you don't need it so what I did is uh, I deleted some of the things like if you see this and this part they both contain uh, the same UVs and they are overlapping each other the same goes with this and this part because these are such a small areas that you won't be noticing the viewer won't be able to notice it and there's not something that uh, uh, which can be uh, highly recognized can be recognized sorry about that and uh, the same goes with uh, this part if I show you the UV shell this is one UV shell and I use the same UV shell from for dif different parts uh, so although all the UV shells uh, are kind of uh, mixed I will be let me show you here yeah. this will be better So this part and this part, they both are in the same space, same uh, place, the same goes with this and this. So I have four UV shells in one area because they give the same uh, 
result so I didn't want to waste my UV shell area uh, with uh, useless uh, things <laughs> right um, so if once you have one area that you are happy with you can always copy that same UV shell and duplicate it and merge them into uh, the same location the same goes here now so all of these are same if I remove just one of them you will be see there's other three at the same place um, this helps in saving this saving your space um, so once you have your low poly you kind of uh, spread all your spread all your uh, UVs I again kind of selected this okay so once you have it what you will be doing is once you spread it uh, in clear way why we are spreading it into straight lines and squares is because once you bake it and tries to texture it you will be adding decals and uh, uh, the straighter your UVs are it will be easier um, the more the straighter it is uh, more it is easier for you to add details to it to add text or logos or whatever alphas you want to add the decals you want to add uh, so it's really important to spread out your UVs into uh, efficient way in an efficient way so that you are able to get get uh, higher details when you texture them so once you have it what I usually do is I select all the UVs I'm just showing it for representation how I worked um, so you will go to modify you will use layout so this is the panel you will be getting so you can start with two or one and uh, you have to preserve 3d ratios and uh, what preserving 3d ratio mean is it will computer will Maya will uh, optimize your uh, UVs in such a way that all of them contains equal number of uh, squares uh, the checker uh, the same resolution will be there in all of that so I prefer using these details 2048 resolution iteration is number of tries that uh, Maya will be uh, computing in order to efficiently put all your UVs in uh, in place so that it covers uh, one by one uh, one cross one area efficiently and sh uh, shell padding is uh, I use 10 and 5 it is usually shell whatever you are using shell padding um, the tile padding is half of what you are using uh, the shell padding so shell padding is the area amount of area between distance between uh, two UVs and the tile padding is the area that you have amount of distance you have between the edges and the uh, and your UVs so five pixel is the uh, kind of uh, distance between the the edge of the square uh, with the UV shell and uh, 10 is the uh, distance 10 pixel is the distance between two UVs so I usually use this uh, uh, kind of settings so once you have it you will do you uh, layout UVs and it will spread everything for you uh, let me just undo it and do it on this guy let 
because I want to show you something. So I will be going to layout preserving 3D ratios and I will be doing layout uh, UEs. Oh, there is some problem with it. Uh, maybe, I don't know why, maybe I moved something. So let me use this instead. layout UVs so Maya kind of adjusted your uh, UVs in such a way that all of all the objects have the same resolution how to check that it have same re resolution is to turn on your checker map and when you turn on the checker map you can see that uh, all the objects in your UV contain a uh, same size of checker and since I have spread it uh, nicely you can see they all are perfect squares some of them might not be uh, but it's okay because uh, not everything uh, like matters sometimes you can ignore a few of the things like if you see this part it's not spread out completely well but it still works uh, there's also another way in order to see if you are able to spread out perfectly or not if you press 7 while being in UV editor you can see this white gap so wherever there's the red or blue you need to fix that in order to have something which is more whiter in color this gives a better idea of whether your UVs are spread out nicely or not you can press 7 again in order to turn off so some of them are not right like this part but it doesn't matter because it's way too inside and uh, I will be putting I'm putting some of the uh, buttons and uh, connectors here so you won't be seeing this area uh, so you can ignore some of them uh, it's not uh, really something uh, you need to be picky about all the time but you have to make sure that majority of the major things uh, line up perfectly uh, so if I turn on the checker like I said you can see all of them are having same number of squares resolution um, now the what one thing that you have to keep in mind is whenever you do this smaller objects will contain uh, a lesser resolution so in order to uh, increase the res resolution on these guys what I usually do is I select these smaller things that matters because when you will be texturing them the smaller details will be washed out if not uh, if they are not of high resolution so I will select all of these maybe more uh, I'm just showing it for representation um, so I selected all of these for example I will move it here let's turn off the checker box let's bring in UV toolkit that opens with the UV editor and what I will be doing is I will be increasing the resolution on these guys by scaling them uh, to uh, to double its size or 1 by 1.5 the size it is already so I will let's do it to if I do it too, uh, I will press on it, press on the button to scale it. Once you have it scaled, you can select all of them. Now, again, you can go to UV layout, 
but this time you don't want to preserve ratios because you increase the um, resolution on some of these guys and the other guys needs to be of the same resolution so what you will be doing is you will be turning it off in order to give it a more um, custom UV kind of a thing and you will press uh, layout UVs once you have it Maya will calculate it again and does it best to uh, put everything in together so once you have it together you have your UV shell ready that you can now go on with the substance printer and you can bake and then texture it and now if I turn on the checker let's turn this off we don't need it you can see some of the objects will have higher resolution so if you look at it it have more number of square as compared to earlier if I just undo it see the number of squares change so that is something you have to keep in mind while uh, doing UV map you just bring it together to the initial UV and let me turn off the checker so once you have it uh, and uh, you have spread all your high polys with the low polys uh, you need to rename things now the renaming goes in a way that uh, I usually make uh, I group high poly together and low poly together and I also group them in layers so that I can turn on and off whenever I want it uh, so what I do is let me just group these together and call it a bake and I will be showing you how I usually do it so I will just show it on this guy maybe so what I did is if I select a high poly just a high poly and let me go here so TV TV high is one object so what I did is I use all these object objects some of them are combined some of them are not so I made seven high poly objects uh, high poly TV high objects and you have to name it like this uh, whatever the name of the you want to give so I gave it a TV underscore high underscore zero one uh, I will tell you why I do it in, uh, in a while so once you have it you have to name it zero one zero two however you want to and if I show you the low poly I have TV low 0, 01 and TV low 0, 02. So once you do it, what my uh, what Substance Painter will be doing is it will be taking names in this order. So let me go to the Substance to show it to you. And let me just turn off all the texture. So for the baking process uh, you will be putting a high poly here and you will be going here and you are telling Substance Painter that you have to compare low mesh with this keyword and high mesh with this keyword and also you have to match by a mesh name so mesh name is uh, the name you will be giving 
uh, here so the mesh name is TV and the underscore low and underscore high uh, substance winter will kind of compute together in order to bake efficiently uh, so what the substance winter will be doing is it will be you have to be a bit te technical to understand this um, it's a basic thing but you have to try to understand it what substance winter does is it will compare tv and it will check whether it contains underscore low or underscore high so when we bring in the low poly in, into uh, substance painter it knows that it is tv underscore low so when you bake them with high poly it will search for the mesh name called tv underscore high and it will try to bake tv underscore high onto tv underscore low uh, and that is how you will be getting result like this um, with so that is why you need to name it perfectly uh, in Maya so underscore 0, 01 underscore 0, 02 doesn't matter that much because um, substance uh, is intelligent enough to uh, understand that it's a different parts of the same material same uh, object so it will automatically uh, kind of uh, compute uh, in its uh, on its own area but uh, don't worry about that but you have to be really precise about the naming how you want to do it so that was a basic and uh, there's one more thing that I usually do if you look at it you are baking low poly uh, you are baking high poly onto the low poly and uh, there are a few things that you will have to understand is there are other objects that will be lining onto this TV TV low object so you have to tell the computer that they are ambient occlusion uh, and uh, what it does it this is ambient occlusion high so what uh, uh, substance does it it will first uh, kind of bake high poly into a low poly and then it will go on to C for ambient occlusion ambient occlusion is kind of a thing which just tells the uh, tells the system that uh, there is some other objects that is kind of um, is in contact with the with the main object so this uh, low poly TV is in contact with this object so there will be some details that the substance painter need to uh, add into your low poly while baking the things and uh, if you go here and check it when you tell the substance painter that there is an um, object here it gave it a better look better details here that uh, won't be there if you didn't mention it uh, same goes over here same goes on different parts of the other uh, area here here and it helps in giving uh, spreading more details on your objects so once you have baked it once you have all the details <coughs> also about the baking details um, just the settings I will be showing it to you my own settings uh, but this is a final setting so it is quite high for the lower settings I would prefer uh, you, you do it 2048 and turn it back to 16 dilation width and don't sub uh, turn off the subsampling because it takes more time to subsample and uh, for the ID these are the some of the details you 
can go through it uh, even this part I would be decreasing it to 16 or 32 um, according to your wish the higher the settings is the higher uh, each substance takes to uh, bake so in order to have test bake you have to have low settings in order to make it quicker for you um, the same goes with ID ambient occlusion and uh, thickness you can decrease it to 32 or 16 so once you have it you will go back to Maya and this time you will be assigning colors make sure all your low poly contains uh, same material uh, this is really important because you won't be making different materials for uh, different parts you will be using just one material and that will be for the low poly and for the high poly you will be making different materials depending on what you want to do uh, so if I show you my hyper shade I have assigned different colors so it's a really efficient way to give you uh, easier um, easier and uh, less stressful uh, workflow it is uh, because it will decrease the, num uh, decrease the size of your file if you have the same number of uh, different materials on low poly the size of your file will be really huge so I will uh, suggest you have uh, just one material on your low poly and then have multiple materials on high poly because when you will bake your textures all the materials of the high poly will be reflected on the low poly so what I did, it, did is uh, I assigned different materials to my high poly so green material I use for plastic body uh, orange is kind of a metal plate yellow is rubber uh, then I have this shiny shiny metal for the for the red and black is for metal reflective that I will be using for the handles and other parts apart from that I also have um, I also have for the uh, color for the connectors gold pins uh, gold pins I have I have for the screws I have connectors connectors is purple I don't know why it's showing blue uh, and there is colored rubber that I have used for these guys and <coughs> so once you have assigned all the colors also I have for the low poly I have assigned a different material for my screen because like I told you um, it has to be in one by one space in order to have everything uh, high resolution so I had to I was forced to have it a uh, different material for this um, otherwise you can have only one for the LCD I have a different material if I select the material or maybe I removed it never mind TV screen we are not using it I was using it before but we were I'm not using it in my final version so once you have all of that you will again export as FBX export selection as FBX and you will put everything in one place I usually have it in a folder called FBX and I have high poly and low poly once everything is there you can bring in here project configuration select files and you can search for your um, material low poly you select it and then you will be 
going to bake textures you can remove it add it again here um, fpx high poly you can add it and once you have it you can play with the settings i won't i will highly suggest that you do all the sub samplings and all these details at the end when everything is done uh, because it takes time uh, for in order to bake everything if your computer is uh, slow you need to do it at the end because it will be wasting a lot of time because there are some things like all these textures that you have placed on high poly you will still be making adjustment later on like i made this adjustment later on i had orange color here and yellow color here so you will be going back and forth uh, while texturing sometimes and also while baking so it's better to start with the low settings in order to get efficient in your workflow without wasting any time and then when everything is done you can bake one final time at the end of your project in order to give higher resolution to your textures for the textures i won't be going in details um, i will be just telling you how i do it i start with the basic uh, <coughs> that is uh, body uh, so plastic base then i have other objects shiny plastic and uh, when i do this there's one thing i will tell you i put all the materials in one folder so since i have assigned all the textures onto all the materials onto high poly and not on low poly how i assign uh, these high poly materials onto low poly is through color selection so if you select um, the mask once you have all those uh, things in place let me just show it to you uh, let me just delete all of those uh, remove mask so I have this uh, let's assume I am starting to texture my objects and I made one texture this um, for the gray plastic base so once I have this I will group it together and then I will right click on it and will assign a black mask to it once I have the black mask I will select the black mask and I will select add mask with color selection once I have the color selection I will choose pick color and now you have the color uh, that you have assigned to different uh, material different uh, objects in high poly so I will select the green color and this will do all your working all, all the thing that you were supposed to do um, so it efficiently put placed all the all the texture onto the green material that you have assigned to the high poly that got baked into the low poly now so you can increase the tolerance you can play with the tolerance you see um, some of the materials were increased so you have to play with the tolerance in order to make efficient use of it um, and this is the perfect way to do texturing i feel because it decreases the um, time and effort that you waste on putting different uh, materials on different uh, objects and it's kind of a hectic thing to do so color selection is something that you should be using instead of assigning different materials to different parts and low poly and this is possible because you are baking so you need to be a little technical about that is why i said you need to be a little technical in order to understand the working the flow of how you are doing things and uh, this will help you in understanding and working more efficiently uh, on your models so once you have this
so once you have this um, you can do the same thing with other materials so I went on ahead and uh, did more of these things uh, I placed different materials on different objects giving better results for the screws for cool pins like I tell I told you I won't be going into details in order to because it's quite hectic and it's not something that can be done uh, really quickly it takes time to texture and I would say it you need to research and take your own sweet time because textures are everything and it will help you to pro to have better details uh, and better uh, it looks soothing to the eyes when you put uh, the details and render it so I would say take extra amount of time on your texturing and on your rendering because you will be amazed how uh, beautiful your models will look after after all this all the texturing uh, the last thing of what I do is decals so I will be explaining the decals a little for you guys so let me turn off all of all of these so I start with a big details and small details so so the big details are these Hitachi and other if you have the logos or something uh, or the other and the smaller details or the decals are the other uh, what you say the stamps or the uh, alphas you remember I told you to spread out your UVs perfectly it is for this reason alone because if you go here if it's not spread you won't be able to type it down so if I show it to you just for uh, just as an example let me select this and let's see font I will select the font and uh, Uh, let's type substance it's okay I'm doing it just for uh, understanding purposes so if you see you have it here let me also turn off uh, where is the dark maybe I have it somewhere else anyway leave it like that um, if I don't have a spread out UVs in a proper way it will turn it won't turn out the way it is turning out now so if I show you one example I was having problems with one of these here was it here it was somewhere here yeah if I show you here I'll scale it down try to stamp it it's not stamping out correctly because I didn't notice it but I wasn't able to spread this area efficiently so now I can't use the stamp and details on this particular area this is the only area that uh, I'm unable to stamp if I go here I can stamp it perfectly because the resolution is less so that is why you need to be careful to spread out your UVs efficiently um, and also if you didn't increase the resolution on some of the guys like here you can't stamp perfectly so this is perfect but if I show you one area where I had a problem is here the counter 
if you see you can't see this area nicely because I forgot to kind of increase the resolution on this guy so it is coming out really washed off and now I can't do anything if I have to do it again I will have to um, go to uh, Maya and I will have to increase the resolution do the UV map again and then I have uh, a model here already a different um, duplicate of the first model and I put it into a different location the UVs and I will have to redo this too so it's a whole lot of process again and I should have been careful but uh, I forgot that one small thing and um, I have to live with it now so you have to be really careful of uh, what you want to do you have to plan it correctly and the planning comes from experience so the more you model the more you will learn what to do how you want to do things and you will still make mistakes which is okay because, because these small things doesn't really matter if I show you my model no one will be really interested in seeing, seeing the looking at that small area because uh, it is not really something that anyone will care about something is written you make out and you will just move ahead right but you need to be and you need to be careful when doing it because sometimes you can you never know you can make a huge mistake with something and you have to uh, bear the consequences because especially when you are working with a studio or uh, a client you will probably having a huge uh, problem with something as little as this so you need to be uh, really prepared for that uh, and also uh, you also need to know which part you need to put the details onto that is why like this area I had to put the details so if I go here and add it I'm able to but uh, if I hadn't planned it beforehand this could have been smaller uh, lower resolution and I wouldn't be able to put on all these stamps all those all these decals like I'm able to do it now so that is why you need to research a lot in order to understand what you want to do how you want to do and that is why you need to have lots and lots of references in your pocket in order to give your, yourself more uh, uh, give yourself more time to um, understand where you want to put the details and how you want to put the details so reference the first step is pre-production and pre-production is that is why really important if you lag behind on the pre-production you will miss uh, the opportunities to uh, like you will have a beautiful uh, product but you won't be able to add details to it so it will be a really uh, sad thing <laughs> uh, putting all those all those hours all those uh, hard work and then wasting it just because you couldn't uh, plan it perfectly right uh, so once you have it you will what you will do is you will export texture I you can do it 4k um, before that you should always bake again with high settings so sampling 2x2 you can do it more but it will take more time uh, the higher the settings are the more the higher the amount of time it will take to bake so make sure you um, have enough time to bake uh, perfectly so once you have it what I usually do is I select a folder where I will be uh, exporting all my textures I usually use PNG I use 16 bits or 8 bits the string you can use and uh, also I'm using two screens uh, two materials so when I if I show you my folder the textures I have all my textures here 
so once I have the textures here I will be going to my Maya again one last time and uh, I will be selecting this I combine all of these together if I would prefer you to not combine the screens uh, if there is any display screen because you will be adding transparency in Momo set so have it different they contain the same object same material but have it as a different object so I have one object I have two object and the third one is the screen that I have this this screen uh, that I have so once I have it I will open Momo set and bring in my object so I have these two objects so what I did is I have two objects and two materials uh, mostly so Lambert and white uh, I duplicated for the glass I duplicated the white material and gave it a transparency if I show you here is this transparency and I played with the transparency so if you see it you will see uh, there's a uh, different kind of a thing and I rename the oh I'm playing with the ambient inclusion sorry about that transparency so this is uh, this is it I won't be again I won't be going into details on how to render uh, in Momo set but you can always it's an easy software once you have it I I use a lot of lights because I'm using two different uh, objects being put together so I had to light it all together what you people usually do is they render one object and then export it uh, as a PNG and put the same object in a different location in Photoshop uh, but this is how you usually work on your project uh, I also with uh, uh, with Mimoset I like to enable uh, global illumination because if I global illumination helps in dealing with the objects which are lined together so if I turn it on there will be a shadow from this object onto this and this object onto this and it works really beautifully and uh, Momo set is quite easy if you want I can uh, share some of the links that I follow for the guys who um, who try to render in Momo set and that is how I learn Momo set uh, it's quite easy it's quite simple and it's quite fast and efficient uh, as compared to Arnold which takes uh, a bit longer time to render things as compared to Momo set uh, also you need to make sure your settings are high um, I try to have it 6000 by 3000 or 6000 by 6000 um, but it depends on um, your own preference and I put transparency on so let me just show you one example let's let's assume we are happy with this shot So I will go to capture and I will click on image so it will work its magic try to export it because of high texture and and too, ma too many lights it's taking a bit of time uh, but I have got it here so if you see it's a PNG with just an object and nothing else uh, and now what I usually do is I have a I have made a kind of a 
Photoshop uh, file for all those all these uh, renders. So let me just open it. I will just bring this file here so I have it here so once I have it here um, what I usually do is I rasterize it and then I usually use levels in order to give it a bit of a brightness it's personal preference you can change the levels as you wish to um, this is something that I like so I will be leaving it here and for the other parts what I usually do is I select this go to filter and then sharpen and unmask sharpen and if you see it increases the uh, details on your render gives it some more subtle look more detailed and uh, crisp looking renders so I can reduce it a bit to maybe 30 30 is fine um, I usually use 50 but for this one I'm using 30 and I will click OK once I'm happy with it um, I can select and go to color range and I use mostly highlights once you have it select it copy it Control C and Control V to duplicate it. Once you have it, so if I turn it off, you can see these are the details that uh, Photoshop captured. Now, what I will be doing is going to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur, and I will just blur it to something like 8 maybe it's up to you um, it's personal preference so once you have it uh, make a mask and then I will delete the ma delete the bloom or that which I don't want where I don't want it so if I turn it on see there's a slight bloom uh, gives a nice render sometimes um, and that is how you do it once you have this you can export it and post it anywhere you want to also in Marmoset you can make a Marmoset viewer so you need to go to export file export and Marmoset viewer once you have it you can add the details your site or whatever art station account or your website the name uh, the title that you want to give and just export it to the place you want to and you will have a Marmoset viewer uh, something like this where you can go and walk and look at your model and feel content that you made something really nice uh, and this is the whole breakdown that I uh, follow the work Flow that I follow for my uh, for my modeling the same workflow I followed for this the same workflow I followed for this kitty toy clock and for the other uh, models that I have made same for the military radio and I hope this tutorial helps you in understanding more about 3d modeling and how you should work um, I would suggest you to have uh, to try making high poly and low poly and then try baking it because baking works wonder and it helps you in reducing the size of the model so it can be used in uh, games and other uh, places and uh, you will be amazed by the 
uh, by the result that will come out of it <clears throat> for your reference i will uh, i will put this uh, all the links to the resources for, for the references and this uh, reference collection board on my art station account also I will be linking this tutorial onto my ArtStation account if you want to follow it. If you want to make something like this yourself, you can always do it. Um, I wasn't that good in modeling before, but uh, believe me, with proper workflow, anyone can learn. So don't lose hope. hope. Um, keep working on your models. Um, you will be able to make realistic models in no time. Uh, best of luck and uh, keep me posted um, let me know how um, how you find my tutorial and the breakthrough break uh, breakdown of my project and uh, let me know what are your views on it thank you and meet you next time bye bye